How would you like to live somewhere that flooded? Not just once, but twice a day, every day. Seashore is found around the edges of the land all over the world. High cliffs, sand dunes, beaches, or rock pools. The seashore makes a great place to live, if you know how. Day and night, the sea rises gradually onto the shore, stays, then slowly falls away again. The tide washes in, the tide washes out. Flood, dry. Flood, dry. Like all creatures, those who live here where the land meets the sea must find food and shelter. It is vital. Nowadays, the coastal environment are facing a very serious threats from both anthropogenic and natural. Among the threats are coastal hazard, tourism and recreation, land sea flows including river runoff and groundwater discharge, land use and water pollution. In order to mitigate and control these threats, monitoring programs through GIS is used. There are many types of monitoring process involving GIS. One of the examples for GIS in coastal environment monitoring is shoreline delineation and change detection analysis. Extraction of shoreline position from these data sources involves geo-referencing maps or aerial photographs and subsequently interpreting and digitizing a shoreline position. Let's look at a dynamic coastal area in Chincoteague National Wildlife Refuge, a barrier island system located along the eastern shore of Virginia. I have obtained historic shoreline delineation data from the USGS, as you can see. This is a very dynamic area that I've pre-developed. We will clip our imagery using an extract by mask tool. So here I have my input raster set as that NAEP 2016 imagery, and I have my output raster set there. <clears throat> Next we're going to perform image classification using the ISO cluster unsupervised classif classification geoprocessing tool. We're going to ask for two classes hoping to delineate both land and water separately. So we have a very quick result there and now that we have our classification results we want to get our data into a vector format using the raster to polygon tool. This will convert our classified data into vector polygons. And now we're going to convert the resultant polygon layer into a line. From here, you can select out the segments that make up the shoreline and prepare for comparison. Now that we have the shoreline segments from 2016 and 2014 delineated, we can compare the shoreline using the generate rubber sheet links from the conflation tool set. This tool finds where the source line features spatially match the target line features and generates lines representing links from source locations to corresponding target locations. Using the results from the rubber sheeting, we can use the charting tools to quickly visualize the shape length field and understand the amount of change. This helps us understand the amount of change that has occurred along this shoreline over the two year time period. Apart from utilizing GIS in shoreline changes, GIS is also utilized for monitoring at the 
Marine Park area. GIS usually were used for zoning where the zones categorized according to the sensitivity of the marine habitat that exists in the marine park area. And now we will learn on how to create a zone based on the category that was set by IUCN. So this picture here shows the IUCN category for the marine park area zoning. As you can see, uh, this zoning is not really that clear. So you can view the IUCN category in their websites. And this one right here is the list of activities that are allowed based on the IUCN categories of zoning in the marine park area. After we obtain the data from the data source, we must change the logo of the data to the ESI or also known as Environment Sensitivity Index. All the data points on the map must be converted into ESI logo. Example of ESI logo that need to be converted such as shorebirds, corals and another sensitive and other sensitive habitat. Go to the art catalog and select your files and then right click choose new shape file and then give your name of the file to the categories of the IUCN that you want it to be. And don't forget to apply the correct map projection to your new shape file. And then start edit your polygon in the designated area and close the area and label the area with the suitable IUCN category. Repeat the process of making new shape file throughout all the zones that you think is suitable for the zones that need to be closed and need to be categorized with the IUCN list. Finally, this is the results that we obtained after we categorize all the zones according to the determined IUCN list.